The snow bike boom is on. It started off in the mountains and now it's everywhere in the snow belt. And Derek is here to talk about snow bikes. And Derek, first of all, let's start off with the technical part of a, of a snow bike in this kit. What is this? How do you get it? This is a, a Yeti 120 kit. So these kits, uh, you take your motocross bike and you add the track and the ski to the kit. Um, this particular kit is all carbon fiber chassis. Uh, every bolt and thing's titanium, front arm's titanium. It comes in weighing at 90 pounds, so it's very lightweight. Uh, the stock wheel, swing arm, and shock on a regular bike's roughly around 50 pounds. So you're only adding about 40 pounds or so, you know, approximately, to your bike. So it's uh, uh, it's pretty amazing for what you're getting, a whole track kit for that kind of, only adding that much weight to it. The actual mechanic part of the bike, engine, does anything like that change, or is it just front and back? Uh, no, yeah, the engine stays the same as the motocross bike. It's, uh, the wheel front wheel comes off, and your spindle and ski go on the front, and the rear wheel, uh, including the swing arm and the rear shock, comes off, and your track kit fits on with the strut rod. It was interesting today, we had uh, snowmobile guys out before, but we've also had motorcycle people on the snow. What's it like for you seeing this bringing snow, you know, dirt people onto the snow? I think it's a big change. You know, a lot of motorcycle people never thought they could take their bike and use it all year. You know, they ride the three seasons and they put it away and they kind of hibernate for the, for the winter. And uh, some of them may or may not ride a snowmobile, but for them to have the opportunity to take their bike that they, they love and ride all year and put a track kit on it and go do, you know, similar type riding, uh, go into the bush, do the backcountry riding, um, come to a track like we're at today. Uh, it's a pretty big opportunity for those bike guys to ride all year. Now, when I first saw one of these kits about four years ago, it was out in Revelstoke, BC, and it was, they were figuring out what to do with this thing because nobody had one yet. It was the first one that anybody had seen. And to see where the sport has gone today, it's gone from the mountains to the flatlands. What is it like for you now trying to show people in, in the flatlands, if we will, of, of the snow belt what these can do? Well, that's what we're here doing today. So we have, uh, we're at uh, Clegg Goodell's Mobile Marine at the racetrack, uh, which he's named the Compound. And uh, we're getting guys out that uh, have interest in using the snow bikes and getting them on a track. So we have the opportunity to ride on track and then we've also been testing in the, in the back country. Um, so it's uh, there's so much opportunity to ride in Ontario uh, a few different spots um, and more and more will be growing. I'll be working on making new spots and uh, the, it's really picking up and the trends are growing. What do people need to know about the sport? Where, where can you ride? Because it's always been a mystery since they came out. People saw them in the trees and they say, okay, I don't live in a tree with an area with 45 degree slope. What do I do here in Ontario, Quebec, maritime areas? What's, what, what, what can they expect from, their, from a snow bike? Well, anybody that has any, any property uh, uh, themselves, um, like if you got any farmland or, or bush or, or any type of land, it's a, you can just cut a trail anywhere you want to go. You got three feet of powder, four feet of powder, and you're just going point and shoot. Um, uh, so that's uh, one place to ride. CSRA is, uh, has a class to race the snow bikes in this year, along with the snow cross sleds. Um, and we did see them in action. We were at Duluth earlier this year. We right. saw them at Duluth. Now they're going to be in the X Games. So it seems like the acceptance has really taken off both you know, backcountry, now back into flatland and in competition. So it must be pretty exciting for you as, as a distributor, dealer, assembler, promoting it to see it taking off in so many areas. Oh, it's very exciting. You know, I can't wait. It's just starting this year. Um, we definitely have some things to figure out, but that's the, that's the fun in it, you know, especially when it comes to racing. And it was interesting also today, the learning curve, because when I ask people, what's the learning curve like? It's surprisingly short. It doesn't take a long time. They say once they get going, it, have you found that with a lot of people, they're surprised at how fast the learning curve really is? Yeah, I think it's uh, more like a motorcycle than people thought it would be. You know, you see a ski in a track and you're like, it's a lot longer and, and you know, you're used to having wheels that roll and you get on and you let the clutch out and you're like, you know, this thing's moving a lot like a bike. There's obviously some differences because there's a track and ski, but it does, uh, it does feel like riding your bike on snow. What was your first reaction when you first got on one of these? I've been talking to other people, but for you, it, what was it like when you got on? It, did, did the fun factor just kick in right away and, or, you know, what, what was it like for you? My first reaction when I got on it is, uh, it, was, it was just awesome. I couldn't believe how great this is. I'm a bike guy. And uh, I've actually had this particular unit all summer, taken to motocross races, uh, promoting that uh, we're a Yeti dealer and then you can race them in the CSRA. And uh, finally got some snow down a couple weeks ago. And as soon as it snowed, we got out on them and I had the biggest grin in the world on how well these things worked and what you could do with them and the places you could take them. And it was, uh, it shocked me a little bit. I knew they worked good from, from watching a lot of the video and I was doing my research, but to have it in under your, you know, under yourself and going to ride and it was awesome. Now, I gotta, I gotta throw a name at you from the old days because uh, because I'm probably a little bit older than you. I used to ride Hodaka 125s, <laughs> yeah. and I could see that the bikes had come a long way. Now, for a lot of us who grew up snowmobiling, we're we're in the area of uh, 600, 800, two strokes, you know, big four strokes and stuff. What's the engine like on this for people who are not dirt, you know, dirt bike people? What's the engine like on this? The size and power, like what are we, we what are they looking at? Uh, these, this one here is a, a 450 cc four stroke. Um, they work really well in the 450s. They do make these kits for 250 four strokes and for the 250 and 300 two strokes. Um, 
Uh, for racing, I think we'll probably be using the 454 strokes. That's what we have them on all right now for our first uh, set of bikes we're testing with. We're having a great snowfall now, so it looks like a great year to get into snow bikes. And how do they do that? Where do they go? Uh, to get into snow bikes, you can contact uh, myself at Fly By You Motorsports. And also, if you're looking to race them in the CSRA, you can go on the CSRA's website. The snow bikes are definitely here. Yes, they are. It's snow bike demo day where people get to come out here and actually try a snow bike and we got a track system set up here and uh, joining me is John Sleeman and uh, John, snow bikes, what were your thoughts out on the track? Uh, awesome, awesome, very different. Uh, you think you can ride a, a dirt bike and you're fairly proficient at it, well get on one of these, it's a different experience. So you're, you're a dirt bike guy, are you a snowmobiler too or a I, dirt bike guy? I used to be a dirt bike guy, I'm no longer, but I couldn't uh, pass up the opportunity to try one of these machines. What were your thoughts? What were your initial thoughts when you got on it and then when you got, started to engage the track and started going around? Uh, it took me back to my dirt bike days. Um, they stand up by themselves very well um, and they're, they're just a, they're a blast to drive. Uh, the ski it took a little bit uh, getting used to. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's hard to, to get used to the lean, uh, but they do track well once you get them set properly and every every bike is different you've got to you've got to adjust your riding style to to the different machine um, so obviously i've got a i've got a favorite out of the out of out of the three what were your observations between the three of them um, well one's a race bike so it's very fast <laughs> the other one has the recluse clutch which is no shifting and the honda over there had the had the long track uh, a little more a little smoother a little, oh, totally different in the steering department. We've talked to John. Let's go check in with some other riders to see what they thought of the snow bikes today. Also out on the test track today was Pat O'Neill and uh, Pat, your thoughts? They're fun. <laughs> In what way? Uh, they're definitely different. They're a different experience. I mean, I don't come from riding snowmobiles or anything like that. I'm, I've always ridden dirt bikes, but it's kind of a, an interesting experience without having a front wheel, no front brakes. But uh, I think the engine braking and the, the amount of traction on the track definitely kind of makes up for it. Take uh, us through your learning curve when you first got on, first engaging, driving away, your first jumps, corners. What was your learning curve like? Uh, yeah, you, the, the ski digs in a lot, so it, like coming from bikes you lean into corners really he front heavy and the, the wheel grabs, but on these you kind of need to keep your weight back. And I originally, originally found that running with a, uh, an automatic clutch like this one has, it definitely made that a lot easier because you got a lot of muscle memory and then kind of taking the technical side away from it and just letting your mind focus on getting your body position right really helped. And then once I, once I figured that out and swapped to a manual clutch, it made things a lot, a lot better. What did you pr prefer clutch wise? Uh, definitely a manual clutch once I got the hang of it because you can just go into corners and, and, and rail around them So you go in and rev it up and dump the clutch It kind of helps spin it around and accelerate through things so you can get the jumps You've tested them out on the track today. What are your thoughts of taking this out on a trail somewhere or boondock riding free riding through trees? What are, what are your thoughts? How, how would you feel about trying something like that? Definitely I'd rather be riding I think out, out in the powder out in the, in the back country doing that I think uh, maybe riding on snowmobile trails you figure you find similar Similar things with riding on the track or the ski be digging a lot more. Like we talked to some other guys, they like we ran them in the in the powder and they they say they're a lot better in there. So I think that's that's probably the ideal spot for them. What were your thoughts today going around the test track out there? The ju the jumps, the landings, you know, with being out with other test riders. What were your thoughts as you're going around the track? It was it was a lot of fun. It was it was different, especially because again I've never ridden snowmobiles before. So it was a track designed for snowmobiles, so it's it's set up differently than a motocross track. I think if you had one that was maybe built built for these, it'd be a lot lot better experience. But I think the, the the ramps need to be a bit longer, maybe going into the big jumps, and then maybe cut down the whoops a little bit more. But it's it's, uh, it's fun. It's definitely a good experience. Like the extra length of the bike. I mean, you learn a lot of wheel placement on a motorcycle. So getting used to the, the extra length on the bike, I think, is going to be the biggest thing. Kind of attacking things a little bit more aggressively. 
so that when you leave the jumps, you're not kind of kicking down or anything like that because your, your bike's staying on the ramp a lot longer, right? So you just need to keep power on a, lot, a little bit longer. Either way, it's still going to be fun? Yeah, for sure.